Mm. She's got it figured out. Like, oh, hopefully cool. she has a driver that's taking us or something. I don't know. That's cool. Yeah, that'll be a good time. Yeah. We'll follow that. Let's see here. All right, buddy. We'll see you later. Thank you. Mike, Sean, again. Take care. Thank you. Sue, John, Kristen, how are you? Hi, Greg. How you guys doing? Good. How are you? Good, good. Another day in paradise. What's up, buddy? I'm here. I see you. Look at you. Do you have an Ibis shirt on? Yep. Are you cheating? We are. They don't make Florida Club shirts. Maybe they do, but I don't have them. <laughs> I'm waiting for my boss to get. I'm waiting for my boss to get me one. There you go. You That's mean you. me, right? But no, I didn't. I meant you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see here. I'm just waiting on Dee Dee here. Hi, I'm here. I'm just cooking, so I'm on mute. <laughs> You're cooking? Oh no! Everybody, watch out. Yeah, I know. Nobody's it's safe. Fire department here. <laughs> what are you cooking? Anything good? Um. Well, my friend's coming over for lunch. I have leftovers, but I'm just heating them up. Um. I made venison stroganoff. That sounds really good. Yeah. Yep. I I don't know yet. I may have to take Shelby to get her wisdom teeth out. Uh. Yeah. Friday's fine. Yeah. He's having a side conversation. Sorry. Um, let's see. What I can go over that I want to go with before she gets here is um, we we've been having issues, and it's it's honestly nobody really on on the Zoom um, or in office here with us. We got Paige and Dee Dee, um, but we're having an issues with app files, and like people aren't organizing the stuff the way they're supposed to be doing. So I'll do um, a little screen share with you guys and kind of show you kind of what Didi and I have to see. Uh, it's pretty much what you guys are seeing. But for us, when we're auditing and if we're not in the office and we're on mobile, I, I'm sure you guys know App Files isn't super mobile friendly. It's something they're working on. That It is one of my things I'm not super happy about with App Files, but you know, there's nothing we can do. Um, so for us, when we're auditing and we're, you know, we're not in office, it's, it's hard for us to see who's doing what. Um, so you can see from our screen, it looks exactly like yours, obviously, but what we're missing a lot of is stuff like this. Um, for instance, we have the address that's perfect. Everybody knows that's how the app file is supposed to be set up. You can see all the addresses here. Um, names, you know, we're not trying to, we're trying to stray away from names. Um, you know, everything's supposed to be set up under, under the address. And the reason being is um, if we get audited, what happens is like, if you guys have a buyer and you're working with that same buyer and you write four different offers for that buyer, the, the thing is, is one, one address, if you're doing his name and you're just putting a bunch of contracts under his name, we need to have them separated per address. Okay. For auditing purposes, it's just a requirement that we have to do through from the legal side um so just just make sure your guys are doing them under the addresses um and you're adding your names because you can see here we don't know you know whose contract this is who's writing the offer who's doing what and for us it's just a it's just kind of a headache you know to <laughs> to to go through that and, and kind of try to audit this especially when we're on mobile um it's easy here i can click on the app file i can see who's doing what uh you know when with the file access but you know, to reiterate, when we're when we're on mobile, which is happening a lot, uh, it, we can't do it as easy. It's it's more of a pain in the butt for us. Um, we want to try to access your files as quick as possible, make it as seamless as possible for everybody. Um, Dee Dee's twitching over here, needing to say something. Show them, show them. How show them what? How to put the agent. Oh, okay. Go to that file. So, well, I'll show you how to like from a new app file, and and listen to it. A lot of times too, like we're going to try to chat with app files about this. This isn't a required item to do. Um, so we're trying to get them to do it as a required item. But if I were to create a new app file, 
you can see the file name is required. So remember, this is always going to be an address. Always, always an address. No names, addresses. All right. I can see it turn green as soon as we input what we need to input. This is a buyer. And then here's where you're going to add your agent name in. So for instance, if I don't add that, and I can see it's not required to add that, I get it. Some people slip, they're excited to write up an offer. They're excited to, you know, to get the file going, whatever the case may be. Uh, but just remember this right here is the section agent name. And we're, you know, for the third time, I'm going to try to get out files to try to make this a required section. Um, but for now it's not. So just remember to put your name. Everybody here is pretty good at it. Um, but if you guys are watching this and, you know, things happen, just, just try to remember, to stay up to date on that. Um, because it just makes life easier for us. Um, and then obviously lead source and you guys will be good from there. Um, depending on the property, you know, whether it's buyer, seller, uh, whatever you input in this category, it's going to ask you for different paperwork, uh, and different required sections. So just depending on that, but just make sure, you know, I can see here, we already put the address in the address is there. No names, no names, no names do the address, um, agent name, agent name, agent name. So please don't forget that. And I'll show you the other thing we're running into is um, making these deals pending. I know we've discussed this uh, a bunch of times, but for you guys, the agents can make these transactions pending. You can't make them dead. Um, so a lot of agents are writing, I say this is dead offer, it's dead offer, that's fine. That's the way it's supposed to work. Um, that way we can review, make sure, you know, that the, the release and cancellation are set up in there and everything squared away. Uh, so that offer is really dead, but for you guys, you can definitely make it pending. Just come in here, go right to the section. You can see where it says buyers here, just hit change. And then once I have my drop down for the file type, I can go right in here and I can make this a pending transaction. I save it. And now I can see the file changes and it changed to pending. So this is gonna alert Didi and myself to know, all right, cool, 499 Calmoso Drive in Port St. Lucie is pending. We can jump on out files in here and we can make sure everything's squared away, everything's good to go, or hey, you guys are missing this, don't forget to do this, don't forget to do that, and bug you about that, that good fun stuff. Um, so I'm gonna put this back to buyers because that's not pending. You guys will see a little bit different. Obviously, you're not going to be able to see like the dead stuff over here, closed files, um, but you will be able to see active listing and pending buyer, pending listing, pending lease, all that good stuff. So just wanted to reiterate on that um, because that's kind of been a thorn in the side lately. Just it's, it's kind of a pain for DD and I to go through and audit all this stuff and then have to come back and and try to finish an app file for, for the agents or try to, you know, get it squared away. So um, that's that. Anybody have any questions regarding that? Good to go. Cool. What, what about getting the um, package done? So when you have a seller and you have the listing agreement and all that good stuff, the MLS set up, and you've got the app file for that Mr. Seller and you've got the listing agreement, you've got the MLS, you've got a seller's disclosure or whatever, and then you sell the property because now there's nowhere for us to go and put an as-is contract and all that other good In stuff. In the checklist. Right. Yep, yep. So we discussed that with ops, or um, not ops, excuse me, with app files. They're working on that to actually create a checklist section for sellers. So if you have your own buyer, for that property for your listing that you're able to checklist that item out um, what you can do for now is you can submit it to a checklist it's not a it's not well, a it's not so much, checklist it's not so much a checklist i'm looking at one here and this is a listing so it goes residential listing paperwork then it goes i i must have done it, it says closing paperwork then other docs uploaded paperwork general paperwork so it's a section in there that we need to have for when we're dealing with some another agent bringing a buyer and 
Okay, I got you. So a yeah, so a checklist. So when you receive that contract and, and then all the other documents relating to the to the to the actual contract side of it. To the transaction, yeah, the yeah. contract side of a seller's transaction. Yes. Okay. It should be it should be optional. I mean, no one's really taking a listing and not expecting to be doing the close side. I think we can actually build that out without having to chat with that files. Um, what property were you looking at, John? I can maybe pop in there and see if see if we can play around with it. Well, you can go into 4161 US Highway 1. So he want we're chatting about like having a um, like see here you have the the required items checklist. Yeah. But it's right. only set up for a listing. Right. Yes. Yeah. So talking about actually creating like a required items checklist for like once once a transaction's in play. So like right. like uh, I bring John over. What's up? Yeah. 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 As opposed to like because if you get a contract in now, you can go into. It's all in the general paperwork. Yeah. yeah. You can make your own little file so, that says executed document. Yeah. Yeah. For the time being. Yeah, we're trying to see. So like see how they have required items. And then this is all the stuff for the listing side of it here. And then you have your closing paperwork, but to try to have them do another tab like here and here or be for the transaction side. So you can put in the executed contract, you put in all the documents needed as opposed to having them see like everything's uploaded, everything's under other docs um, and general paperwork. So it'd be easier to just kind of, for a listing, you would have three different sections that way everything's squared away. So you know, all right, cool. If I need the execute listing agreement, I'd go right to the residential listing paperwork or I need the contract, I can go to the transaction paperwork. Even rather than that, can't they just add a little line item rather than adding all Yeah, so that's what we were talking to them about originally was trying to just add a line item here. Um, so that was the thing. Cause I I'm pretty sure we can on our back end go back and DD. Can you shut that door, please? Um, I'm pretty sure we can add in a subsection here. So, well, yeah, we'll look into that, John. That's a good point. Right. I'm going to see if maybe we can pop in something ourselves or if we have to uh, go through our files for that. Cool. Okay. All right. So anybody have anything else regarding that aspect? No, nope. squared away. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's go over a little bit of chime. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, let me log into chime. Josh is going to give you guys an update on the Redfin stuff. Uh, he's finally approved and he was actually getting in some leads this weekend, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to let him take it off for a little while and give you an update on uh, the Redfin deal. Yeah, pretty simple. So um, over the weekend, so I was approved on Friday. Um, and again, the approval process is all the stuff they require ahead of time, plus survey responses from your past clients. And uh, one of our agents, Tim, brought up a, a, um, a question, if you're not following along in the Facebook group about you know, am I concerned or would, should we be concerned that Redfin is a brokerage and we're actually releasing our clients information to them? Um, you know, everybody has their own way of thinking. My response to that is that I know for a fact people are on Keller Williams website, people are on Waterfront Properties website, they're on Zillow, they're on Realtor.com, Trulia. Their shit's everywhere to begin with. So I'm not overly concerned about that, if that makes sense. But again, if, you know, however you feel is how you feel. So I don't have a problem with releasing my, the emails of past clients to them. Um, and what they do is it's a quick, simple survey that's sent out to them and they just have to give you a star rating and they can leave comments if they want. Um, you're encouraged to obviously have them say nice and warm, fuzzy things about you so that you can uh, get to the next step. So anyways, all that happened, I was approved and literally immediately I was approved Friday and on Saturday I had two leads sent to me. Um, so the territory that I'm working right now, only because that's what they had available was Port St. Lucie. 
Um, so two buyers leads came in for the, actually the exact same property. Um, so it was a new one listed at $300,000. Um, so the way it works is similar to um, how you would receive um, op city. an op city lead. Uh, we're going to get, you get an email or you get a text message with um, a link about um, accepting it. The customer notes that when they want to go see the property, you get the property address, the MLS, and then you have uh, one, two, three, four, five options. Option one is busy, meaning you cannot make contact within an hour. Okay. Option two is area, meaning it's not an area you service. So whether you know you're in Port St. Lucie and it's in Miami, obviously you would just type back area so that way they know it's not where you're at. Uh, type you do not service this type of property, um, or uh, or this is your listing. So I get um, and so that's an important thing because you're actually not allowed to uh, per their agreement if you read it. We're not allowed to work both sides mm. if we have a Redfin client. Doesn't mean Greg can't do it, mm -hmm. quote unquote, uh, but you personally can't do it. Um, so in the interest of uh, their lead, you're not supposed to do that. Um, and then you have pause, which means you could pause your uh, entire account. They will not send you any more leads until you are uh, unfreeze it on your own. And then bogus, and bogus means uh, rentals, uh, which was, uh, I know somebody had a question at one point, are they sending you rental leads? Um, and apparently, they are not. So, um, if you so these are all buyers and buyers and sellers. Things. Cool. Yeah. Um, so if you do get a uh, rental lead, uh, you can reply back as bogus and uh, not be required to take it. Um, again, you have to receive seventy five percent of the leads sent to you. You have to accept them in order to stay active. Uh, you have to maintain their star rating, and all your clients will be surveyed, Redfin and private, meaning. I sell Greg a house, no way, nothing to do with Redfin. They're going to send, I'm required because they're attached to the MLS to send a survey response to Greg through Redfin. Well, they'll do it. And Greg needs to answer that. Um, so you need to let him know, hey, it's not uncommon. You're going to get a survey response uh, that I really, really need your help with. I just need you to, because I'm a partner with Redfin. You could say it that way. You can't promote that you're a partner with Redfin. Mm -hmm social media, et cetera. Um, but you can say, hey, I'm partnered with Redfin and they survey all my clients. Just be on the lookout. You're going to get an email survey. It's going to take you about three seconds to finish. Uh, just go ahead and fill that out for me. So, okay. um, and from that point, I'll open up for any questions if you have any that I can answer. And if I can't, I'll tell you I can't. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. Is there, before anybody asks, is there anybody on the Zoom that's interested in, in getting on those leads? Um, we haven't really heard back from many people. Um, I know it's tough because you do need five transactions. Is, is it five or four? It's five transactions. Um, I know there was some question whether or not it was rental or sale. Um, I don't have clarity on that. I can contact my person at Redfin to see, um, or Greg can reach out. Um, I just haven't gotten clarity on it. Um, you know, I don't know how, John, how you guys close out your deals. I know you guys are doing more than 10 deals a, a, a year. Um, so if you're closing them out under one and not the other, and if you both wanted to get involved in the Redfin program, my suggestion would be to close them out, you know, five, five. So you qualify if you're even looking at this as an opportunity, uh, that way you can get on there. It would go for anybody else who's working on a team, um, who, and, and, and a team aspect, this, you know, standard is point. to put it all under one person. Mm because you get better MLS credit that way, you get more exposure. So when you're farming an area, Greg's the guy, even though I sold the property, nobody gives a shit about that. They just wanna know who's listing and selling. Uh, so you, you pump those numbers mm -hmm. by putting them under one person. So if you're on a team or something like that, or if you haven't claimed the MLS credit because you were on a team, uh, maybe you should contact That's a good point, uh, the yeah. board and go back if you have 12 month uh, transactions that were closed out under somebody else. Cause when I was at another brokerage, I was on a a team and all my transactions were closed out under the team leader. Mm -hmm. So if you've experienced that or are experiencing that, I would say go back and fix it so you can get in this program if you want to. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, that, that's a really good point. Yeah, because some people do it differently, I guess, maybe for tax purposes or some people do it differently. To So definitely look into that. Um, I know on here at least uh we could definitely get actually we could probably get all you guys on there i knew sue's working her last uh transaction for that so we could get 
Sue on there in the next month or so. Um, John, Kristen, and Sean definitely could uh, fit the bill as well. So if you guys want some some free pay as you go leads, uh, you know, pay as you close leads, let us know. Let's get you on there. I know the guy's waiting for me to give him a list of people, um, but I'm not going to sign you up unless you're, you're going to work them, close them out, and uh, don't want to make some more money. So it's up to you guys. Just let me know. And to um, Greg's point, it's not a part-time thing. I don't want to sound like a jerk, mm -hmm. and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the fact of the matter is if you're going to commit to it, it's a commitment because they're going to push the leads to you. As I said, within 24 hours, I already got two. Um, I paused because it was my daughter's birthday over the weekend, um, so I was busy. So I paused my account, um, which I'll be reopening today um, and taking on those leads. So they said three to eight. They've already met the criteria of two, um, three to eight a month. Um, so they have already hit me with two of them. So for those of you guys that might be struggling to get business or struggling to find new business, great opportunity, but it's a commitment. Don't kid yourself. That's a good point. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you don't want you don't want to jump on them and then uh and then you know get booted off or whatever because again this is basically like op city for us we don't do any of the auditing that's going to be all up to redfin yeah um so you know if you guys aren't claiming leads or you're not answering or doing what we're supposed to be doing and they boot you off uh unfortunately it's out of my hands so um i think somebody had something was that you Kristen? yeah no i'm just saying I'm, I'm interested i just kind of missed um from before when you guys were talking about it, not today, but previously. Um, so I just need to know a little more information and I'd like to um, get on, on that with Redfin. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll give you a ring after uh, just it, unless other people have questions about it. But uh, if not, I'll, I'll give you a shout out for the meeting and we can go over it. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's basically, you just get another lead source from us, um, partnering up I don't even want to say partner. I don't even know what the word to use because you're not partnering with Redfin. You're just getting a lead source from Redfin. Same thing as Op City, um, mm -hmm. but they're like Josh said. You're not getting rentals. They're they're all buyers, sellers. Yeah. Um, the, the real quick major difference is that people know the platform Redfin. Mm -hmm. People understand who Redfin is in the market, so they gravitate towards that because most people go to the consumer website that they're most user friendly with. So if they've been on Redfin before and they like it, they'll just go back to Redfin to do their search. Mm -hmm. Well, now Redfin's capturing that information. Um, obviously, they have a surplus, so they're pushing it out to local agents uh, to where they can't um, service those leads with in-house actual Redfin agents. Uh -huh. And then, you know, the split is, you know, it's in your favor, but it's a 70-30 split, I think, similar to Op City. Uh, but that's really the long and short of it. And like I said, Greg and I can talk to you. If you want to call me, I'll answer questions. Okay. Right. Yeah, we're kind of as far as the broker standpoint, we're um, our next step is to just kind of get some agents signed up. They it's very basic at first. You have to go through a um, like a vetting process, if you will, have five transactions closed, um, and then they're going to go back and review all your you know give you a review from your clients and stuff like that. So it's kind of our out of our hands, honestly. I don't. Josh has more information than I do actually because he's actually on the program already. Um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not going to be taking leads obviously because that would be competing. So um, if you guys do have any questions, you know you can vet them to me. I'll vet them to Josh, or you want to give them a shout. You yeah, you know. can reach out to me directly too to take some of it off of Greg because uh, I mean I'm a little farther along into it than Greg is. Actually, anybody is at this mm -hmm. point. So I do have some more uh, information that maybe I haven't disclosed for lack of remembering. <laughs> so, but yeah, give me a shout. Shoot me a text. Cool. Anybody have any questions on that aspect? Going once, going twice, gone. Okay, did you have anything? The only thing I just wanna, you know, just go over one more time, I sound like a broken record, but on app files, you guys can put it in, you can change the status and put it into pending, but you just can't put it back. So we, I've been going over a lot of files yesterday and so many, honestly, at least 10, maybe a dozen are all pending. When I write the realtor for an update, it says, oh no, that's a dead deal. So you guys have to let us know. Just send us an update, send us a text email that this is a dead file. Otherwise it just hangs on there. and We're waiting for title and everything else. We have no idea. So you just have to, you really have to, if it's dead, you just send, shoot us a quick email right from that files. Yeah, there was a few yesterday that we were like trying to get DAs out for already sent DAs to the title company stuff like that. And then the agent finally wrote back or called back and was like, oh no, that that died out three weeks ago. Yeah. 
Um, Because they can't change it themselves. Yeah, you can't change it to dead. We went over it a little bit earlier. Um, You can't change it to a dead file, but you can let us know and we change it. So, you know, um, we didn't know it was dead, obviously. So that's up to the agent to tell us it's dead. So just just make sure you're creating an update. It's as easy as writing a text message. Go into your app file for that property as soon as it's dead. And again, that reverts back to, you know, I think, we were talking about it last week or the week before is setting some time out for real estate, you know, whether, whether you do that first thing in the morning or at night, when everybody goes to bed, um, go through your files, do a little audit yourself, shoot the updates on each file, let us know what's going on. We'll wake up in the morning and, and we'll get everything squared away. If we have to make them dead for you or you're changing them depending, we'll make sure everything's squared away. So just uh, cut that time out in your day, whether you're doing it full time or not to, uh, to really make sure that app files is, is cleaned up. Um, a question on app files. So once they're dead, is there any way to hide them? So I don't have all of these that I have to go through to get to I have a lot of dead ones. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And it, yeah, it's not, it's not just you either. It's, it's everybody's dead. You can, in fact, you can see uh, we have 93 dead offers already this year. Uh, and that was 107 last year. So it's not just you guys. Um it's, it's everybody in the marketplace right now is having that issue. So go to a file. I'll just do, I'll just do one of mine. There's a spot, it might not be on ours, but if you were, yeah, see, I don't see it. Where, what is it? It's usually in the top right, and we'll say hi. Maybe because yours is closed. Oh, it's already closed out. That's why. Okay, let's go to a dead file. Let's try going to a dead file. And do this. You can use mine if you want, because I've got dead files out there. Let's see. What uh, do you remember? One of the addresses, Sue? Uh, I mean, recent. Um, yeah. Hold on. Cedar. Cedar. Something. Oh God, I don't remember the full address. Hold on. There it is. Cedar Bay. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Cool. No, that's not mine, but that's no, okay. That's, Dawn's. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. Sorry, Don. <laughs> First three. What's the first number? Well, it's not in there either. Let me just go to a dead over here. Hold on. So this is a dead file, DD. Yeah. So there's a. I think they can go to trash it. Go to trash it and see. It's already did, but I'm okay. Sure so apparently, if you go to trash, yeah. send files to trash. Yes, that but that will get rid of your. It won't. So it's still in the file right, itself, right. but it's going to get it off of your, like your homepage. My say, homepage. Yeah, that's you know. what I want to do. So when I pull up my homepage, I only have active or closed. Right. Yep. So if you just click on that property, it looks like, and then go to, um, go on the right side over here. You'll see it'll say, you know, delete staff file or trash. So it's trashing it. But it might come back if you want the information, you can untrash it for the information for another property. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you can untrash it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, uh, great. Thank you. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm wondering that too, to be honest. I know. It's if I hiding up there in the corner. Anybody else have any app files questions? I don't mind staying on app files, to be honest. If anybody has anything else. Nope. Yeah, that uh, If you're an agent watching this, that that is part time. Um, what happens a lot of time is if you're inactive on app files for a while, it'll boot you off. Um, so you can see here, add edit users. We can just go in and add it. Um, we just had an issue the other day where an agent um, that was does it part time was doing a deal for their first time in like eight months or something. They couldn't get access to their app file, so. We just had to basically go back in and, and re-add them, if you will, send you an email and all that good stuff. So if that ever happens, just let us know. Um, nobody here should have that issue. Everybody here is pretty active. So, um, but if somebody watching in this has that issue, just let me know. Uh, and no, it's not reason for you to not add in any folders or files or app files. It just means we have to re-add you on the program since you've been inactive. All the information stays. Yep, all the information stays. We can get it to you somehow some way so um you show them reggie's last one that's a good good communication that went back and forth with reggie and me yesterday um see yeah like i think it's this one 
um, yeah, this is file dead. And then he wrote back just, just real quick, yes, so I could track it. Yeah, so like that, it's kind of a good example. Um, yes. Is like Brandon wrote, wrote us and said, can we close this file and trash right. it? Um, as long as with trashing another file. So it's easy for us to be alerted. We get an alert for that. So it's easy for us to immediately go in and go boom, trashed, good to go, um, as opposed to having to reach out. So yeah, that's just. Um, so the difference between dead offer and trash is that dead offer, um, it appears, I mean, trash appears as trash. It's kind of like it gets put back in the back where dead offer kind of is stays up a little bit more because it, it sounds like the same thing, but it actually means that the offer is dead, but there will be more. Probably you're working with a buyer and that offer may be dead, but it keeps it, it, it you know, it's the difference between you might be doing another offer. If that buyer walked away and said, I decided not to buy anymore, you'd put it in trash. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Oh, did I just say one more thing? Absolutely. If you guys are going on listings, um, hopefully, <laughs> um, there is on Breakthrough Broker, there's a nice listing packet just to let especially the newbies know that there you can go there and for free, you can download a pretty nice, you just fill in, it's like plug and play, you fill in your own information. And you can, there's like 18 pages, but you can also delete any page. Like when I go on a listing, I take maybe four out of all those 18. They do have market, you know. Um, you can do it on reports. a, um, yeah, you can actually save it. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And bring it, like if you have an iPad as well, you can actually save it and bring it on your iPad uh, as opposed to printing it all out. I mean, you know. I guess it depends on your type of client if you wanted to print it out and give it to them um, or if you wanted to just show it to them on an iPad, you can send it to them digitally, I believe, as well. Let's see. And it's good to team that up with um, a custom website of the property, too, right? Yeah. On And then show them on your iPad or laptop or what have you. And it's kind of neat because then they know that you're into more high tech than just paper, you know? Well, the other thing that was really drive home some value is uh, the market summary. That yes, the list, the list reports by Lisa, that one? No, no, oh. no. Like what's happening in the county for townhouses, mm -hmm. what's happening in the county, like sale, closing cash, yada, 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 yada. So a really good one. Yeah, Breakthrough Broker has some really good stuff. Right? That's, it's a lot of this stuff is free as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to see. I, I mean, you can do flyers, you could do for your open houses, you can, do a really cool list presentation, um, and it looks professional. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah, do all see, the pages. The listing. But. So if you go to marketing, if you create an account, like you, you can see, like my account's free, um, and I've used a lot of stuff through them. Uh, videos, veterans, you know, Happy Veterans Day post, uh, listing announcement posts. So you can see a lot of the stuff is social media influenced. Um, but oh, is that it? Mother's Day is coming up. That would be a good here. one to send to all your contacts. Mm -hmm. Let's see I if, think you get if 10 I a month. finish building this. Yeah, so it's super easy. Once you once you get it set up, oh, come on, I'll sign it right now. One second, oh, no, sorry. Over like... my login. Okay. I know. It's so long. <laughs> you just use a mic because you're not set up yet. All right. Anyways. 
Okay, so it's pretty easy once you're once you're in and using the program, it's pretty easy to plug and play this and you only really have to do it once. Um, I actually have mine saved on the computer. I'm just X out of that stuff. I don't need to. Update it. Uh, it's actually pretty easy to do once you're getting it set up on, um, you know, and set up and in, in on PowerPoint, you can go in. If I did the whole sign in and everything, I could play with it, but you literally just click this. You can change the name. You can click this. You can change your photos. Uh, anybody that's somewhat proficient in computers can get this done pretty easily. Um, I think when I did mine, it took, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes to do everything. Like Didi said, there was a lot of these pages over here that I got rid of. Um, you know, overviews are good. About me's are good. You know, about your business is, is pretty good. Um, but there's a lot of stuff you can plug and play. So every time you're going to a new listing, you can, you can change up some of these. Um, I'll get back. You know, there's important questions. Like I said, some of these you could, you could get rid of, cut this, cut the slideshow down a little bit. Um, you know, you can throw in testimonials, recent sales, especially if you're going into a neighborhood where you sold a lot of properties. Um, it would be good to, you know, pop in some, you know, a bunch of your recent sales. Um, you know, stuff like this. What does realtor mean? I mean, you could probably get rid of that, but it's up to you guys. Um, but it's it's pretty easy. Once you get it set up, you really don't need to change too much. It's it's pretty plug and play. Um, there's a few sections on there regarding properties that you might have to change out, but it's it's a pretty simple process. Once you get it, get it built out. Um, you can keep it, you can save it on your, you know, your computer, you can download it as a, uh, you know, print it out, or you can just download it and use it, you know, virtually like this, let a seller scroll through it. Uh, it's up to you guys how you want to do that. But that coupled with a property um, web page, if you're going to a listing, you know, potential listing is, would be pretty, pretty stout to have. Um, so it's pretty easy process. You just created an uh, account through Breakthrough Broker and you'll be good to go. You can see you create a profile and then in that profile, you can put headshots, you can do everything. So where it'll actually plug and play, you can do your brokerage photo, all your info here. Um, and a lot of the, the stuff as far as like social media stuff will actually uh, update automatically. So you don't have to input your headshot and do all that good stuff. Um, so that's a pretty good, pretty good tool to have, play around with, get used to. Uh, like I said, it's yeah, it's free. I mean, yeah, there's social media stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it's a pretty cool little program. Um, we're not affiliated with them in any way or shape or form. So you know, there's nothing um, you know going on with that that we can you know answer as far as too in depth. As far as us, just we just use it. For ourselves as well so and if it were your main platform you could go to get plus and it's a small fee per month but honestly you could just do everything on this program it's amazing i i don't pay anything i just usually use it if i'm running out to do a listing or something you know and you need something <laughs> yeah it's, nice it's pretty cool i mean like i said the the yeah. um the powerpoint's really neat because you don't you can just make it once and then in all honesty, you can just leave it the way it is, print it out, and then you bring it. Uh, once all this stuff and you know the personal stuff is set up, it's pretty squared away. So, yeah, pretty pretty neat program. Mm -hmm. Definitely help you in uh, with um, listing presentations and all that good yeah. stuff. Yeah, and I think you could email those presentations to um, your your you know all your people that you have stored in a crm program or something right you yeah, download yeah I mean, it. you can download it so yeah. you can send it you could email it to them as as opposed to keeping a um you know like a a cop, print copy and send and give it just giving it to them we all know nowadays where those usually go mm -hmm. um, but yeah you can see you have all social media posts as well uh you can do a bunch of flyers all that stuff so it's a good site for you guys to jump on and Definitely play around with it. All right. Anybody else have anything else? Guess not. Yeah, I mean, that's really all I got for today. Um, you know, there's not much, it's a little bit quiet out there. You know, a lot of offers being written. Um, I know agents are, you know, a lot of agents are kind of starting to to get upset 
Um, they're doing a lot of a lot of uh, writing offers and stuff like that. But just keep it up. It's tough out there for everybody. Um, I know one of our agents just wrote, I think it was 16 offers for one client. Um, and they ended up just, just getting executed. So just keep it up. It's, out, it's tough out there for buyers. If you have listings, you know, it's, it's cakewalk, assuming you're, you're priced pretty well, but um, not much marketing needs to go into it. But, you know, if you guys need anything, just give us a shout. Let us know. We're always here. Um, so, yeah, that's really all I'll have for today. And Thanks, Greg. You're the best, bro. Absolutely, my man. Appreciate it, Chano. Yes, sir. Thank you. You bet, guys. Take care. I'm going to see you later. See you, Jono. What happened here? Let's see. I have a question for you. Okay. I'll be my best. It's about this. Um, it's about this thing I have on my life.